All right, this is the college football hiring and firing. So we're talking head coaches. It's brought we're to you by talking two. some coordinators too. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk all kind of different stuff. It just it, we we're gonna roll through them. I should have put like a timer on us. No, nah. but I'm not that worried about that. Let's. Uh, all right, so it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six awesome sports books. You can find them all over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us, our picks, previews, social media, YouTube, da 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 over at winningcureseverything.com. Do us a favor. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. Let's jump in. Let's talk number one. We didn't get to talk about this last week. Yeah. Well, I mean, so let's let everybody know. We record on Sundays, this one right here. Yep. So well, Sundays and, Sunday and Tuesday nights. But right, this one's being recorded Sunday morning. And so it's just December one of those the things ninth. where it, any information that happens after this, we didn't know that. We couldn't yeah. predict. We're, we're guessing from that point forward. Yeah. Now, all of these are, are done. Like yeah. These are done. Mo- yeah. What we're going to talk about now is done. We're going to get into some speculations and stuff like that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's start off. Urban Meyer. Okay. Leaves Ohio State. He retires. Everybody kind of saw this coming from all the way back in – in July and August, as soon as the the Zach Smith stuff popped up, it was uh, okay. He's going to find a way out of this. Yeah, uh, and, and then and then every game he just l- looks in agony on the sidelines. He didn't look in agony in that Michigan game. Oh, that's the only one. That's, I mean, a, all that's the only the one. Rest of them. Yeah, the rest of them were really really bad. Um, tell me, like, what do you think about Ryan Day? Let's well, let's get off of the Urban Meyer. Okay. I don't know anything about Ryan Day other than he was an Urban Meyer assistant, and he, I guess, had, people say he had a three-game like interview for it or or whatever, but he really didn't no, because Urban prepared the entire team all week. Urban was just suspended for game day. The whole game plan is put in already. All the yeah. work is already done, and Ryan Day might be fine. My thought is, you think of Ohio State as it's one of the blue bloods. You know, it's 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 the Alabama, the Oklahoma. You know, they they don't Notre Dame, they USC. They they don't just promote up an assistant. They they hire a committee and they yeah. go get the biggest and best named guy. The last time they tried to do this, didn't work out so well. Well, Fickle. they so they gave Fickle the interim job, but that was a little bit different. Like they knew they weren't going to stick with Fickle because they hired him in May. Like it was after I, all the NCAA yeah, stuff. Yeah, and I and I get that, but in this case, you had time to go find. That's right. Somebody. They didn't even they didn't even hire a search committee or anything. It was just yeah, they didn't look what at we're doing. anything. It was I, and people say that this is why Urban did it is because he felt strong enough in Ryan Day as his successor because of the way that Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley went. Well, down. I was just about to say it, it. It looks like it's working in Oklahoma. So if you've got you know, an offensive genius that you think deserves that next step. They don't have to be a head coach at a smaller place first. Well, you can and, just go ahead and bypass that and, and get them. Well, Stoops did it to to give Riley an opportunity in his first season, right? Stoops stepped down in, in July. Nah, Stoops didn't do anything to help anybody else. Stoops, I think, had a lot of heat coming on him from the Joe Mixon stuff, and I think he was just done. He made all the money in the world he wanted to make, and he was done kissing eighteen year olds butts and begging people for money and all the other things that you've got to do to be a head coach at a major university. He you have to go on radio shows that you don't want to go on, you have to talk to people you don't want to talk to, you have to have dinners that you don't want to do. And it's just one of those things where I think Bob was very much like, you know what, scrutiny is getting a little heated. I'm I'm gonna step down. I don't think well, he was doing it to the help scrutiny, Lincoln Riley. The, okay, so so Forget about that. Forget about him helping anybody. Uh, but the timing of it did help Lincoln Riley because oh, yeah. there was no time for a search committee. Right. No. Like, it was, okay, you're gone. It's July. We, we can't hire anybody. We got right. fall camp starting in, like, two weeks. All right, well, Lincoln, you're the guy. That's it. No, um, it, it, yeah, and it, it's worked out this, ex- extremely well. In this situation... Like Ryan Day, all right. So Ryan Day is highly thought of, right? That's right. He's a Chip Kelly guy. He would have gotten he, a head coaching job somewhere else. Well, just he, he turned down the Mississippi State job last year, which is funny to me. Mm. I never heard that, and then it was eventually reported. But he turned down the Mississippi State gig, and 
then of course they go to Joe Moorhead. But State was going back to the well. They said, "All right, well we had Urban Meyer's assistant before. That's right. It's worked. Well, let's out go get once. the other guy. Yeah, like it worked out with Mullen. We had him for nine years. Uh, so like I don't. I think Ohio State could do better than this. Do we assign grades to these? I mean, let's not nah, forget that. I, I no, just I, mean, I don't know what to think fun. of this. Like, well, yeah, I mean, it's impossible because you don't really know a whole lot about the guy. We just always work under the premise that these guys need to have a stepping stone job beforehand because you could be a great coordinator or an assistant. You could be a great game caller of a play, yeah. but you can't be a good CEO. And there are guys that are not good coordinators – because they're they get bogged down in details and they're just not as great as that. But when they're made the CEO, they're exceptional. Yeah. So it, it's it's just one of those things where all of these things time's going to tell. I'm I'm quite certain with the talent that Ohio State has and gets, he's going to do fine. His resume is going to look great. There's only like three losable games on their schedule every year. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, with that. I mean, anybody, any moron could go in there. I mean, I'm I'm a dummy. I could go in there and I could coach them to to seven, eight wins, nine wins. Yeah. Now, fickle that that one year he only went six and six, but yeah, that's that was he, a little different situation. Yeah, moved out. He he also won ten games at Cincinnati this year. So that's like, right. Well, he takes some time to learn. Take I mean, some time and know. learn on the job. That's right. All right, let's uh, let's jump into Liberty, Liberty University, hiring Mister Hugh Freeze. Turner Gill retired. Uh, this was – it went about as well as you could do for a school like Liberty. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they way outkicked their coverage on this Correct. One. But part of me wonders from the Ole Miss side of this, how long – like, is it two years before Ole Miss tries to hire him back? I, I, don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Um and I'm curious. I mean, that's that's my thinking. I'm curious is Hugh <laughs> is Hugh interested in using this as a stepping stone job, or is he just yes? 100% I mean, I would I would yes. think so as well. But if he wanted to do, I would think stepping stone wise, you would rather be a coordinator at a big program than the head coach at a small program. Or is he just going to stay in this job for? Is ever this something and ever and he's comfortable in and he knows that he's made mistakes in the past? And at Liberty, you don't have to deal with the NCAA because you ain't paying anybody to come play at Liberty. Well, and not like you're, not, that, dealing with, you're not dealing with the NCAA. It's you're not a dealing private with boosters. school. You're not so dealing they, with boosters. They're not yeah. under the Freedom of Information Act, so well, you don't yeah. have to give out your cell phone records and That's, no, like, whatever else. But no, no, no. And aside from that, even like if he has completely changed, which is totally, totally possible. That's right. Um this could be like the safest place for him. Yeah, this could be like a really good spot for him. Now, I would assume that he will use this to to work into something else. I would too, but but you know, if know. It, happiness means different things to different people, man. If you're I mean, just if wanting he's to made, coach, and you're he, just he's, to, he's made enough money, and and not that he's made all the money in the world, but he's made a lot of money, and then now he's at Liberty. They're going to pay him a fine salary. It's not going to be what Power Five salary is. No, but it'll be a million or or but 1. Even, like, 2, you 1. know, 5. you can live you can live like a king there, and and be a king there. Yeah. So and that'd be great. I mean, and it works. Per it's an evangelical school. Yeah, it's perfect. That's, that's right in his wheelhouse. Yeah. So it, it, this could be like a long term thing. I would suspect it is not. I, I will tell you this: is a and and you're we're talking, man. I mean, we, I would say apples to oranges, but we're like apples to horses. Okay, and comparing like what I do for a living and what Hugh's done for a living. But but I but I own my own company, and I've made a decent living. We've made great changes to grow, and I'm making a substantially better living than I was. I'd go back to the way it was in a second if I could undo everything I've done the last year and a half. Because the level of stress and the level of headache and the level of, of beatdown that it puts on my body and my time it's not worth it when I was doing really well and crazy happy. Hugh, right now, make a million bucks a year. You're in liberty. You're surrounded by your people, people that think like you and agree with you. You're not That's having to point. pander to boosters. You're not having to go and 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 kiss these 18-year-old butts because 
everybody that's going to come play for you is going to come play for you. Like, no, nobody – point. You're not recruiting anybody at Liberty because the top talent's not going – coming there. And the people that would be in your, like, competition's world, you can play for Hugh Freeze – or you can play for whatever unknown coach that's never done anything in their life. You got a real good point here. I would happiness means different things to different people. Some people want to be, you know, I don't know. They they want it all, and some people are just like, man, I've had a taste of that. I'm well, totally how much fine did Hugh make used to be. at at Ole Miss? Not a couple million dollars, but doesn't matter. Let's say he so, made nothing. So, no, a million no, bucks a year is a lot of damn money. No, I know it is, but let's let's say he made like four million. He was the coach for five years. Yeah, and he, did he get any buyout or was it for calls? No, it was for calls. Okay, he so got, he got no buyout. So, got so so let's just say he made twenty million dollars. Twenty million. Let's say he kept half, ten of it. You piss away ten million dollars in five years. I mean, what I mean, do you there's no to, real reason for him to have to go back to why now now yeah I mean money's money's a great reason to do it when somebody else will say hey we'll pay you five six I mean if if things don't work out with Pruitt and Tennessee came like hey you know we're we're a big school we'll pay five six million dollars for a coach like we'll pay seven we'll, we'll we'll get there would you do it I mean that's hard to turn down when you're making a million but th- I just I'm talking about the stress and the headache and all that comes into it. Yeah, it, it's it's it d- just because if it wasn't for his religious purposes and thoughts and and what he what he talks about and then being at that school, it, the most conservative, probably most religious in in the football world, um, uh, of of what we're talking about, I just think that is a you always talk about fit, and I think fits kind of a dumb thing like if you're a good coach you coach anywhere and if you're a great player you could play anywhere but but in this in this this situation situation, when he's been at the top of that mountain he went head to head with nick saban and beat him yeah and beat him and beat him like you had one too many beat him's in there I need you to back it up a little God, bit. <laughs> that boy is so sensitive about the losses Alabama has. You got like nine in your lifetime, and you're so sensitive about them all. I got way more than that in my anyway, lifetime. Anyway, irrelevant. This is not about yeah, them. It, regardless. He's been at the top of yeah. that mountain. Yeah, he's been there. He yeah. won a Sugar Bowl. That's right. At Ole Miss. I don't know. I, I had, hadn't been done since like the 60s. This is – this is, and a lot of this is me putting putting my thoughts and feelings on them because – this is the this is the world I'm in right now, work wise. Yeah. I, I I would I would go back a year and a half in a second and just do everything the way I was doing it and not grow a lick. That yeah, makes I can understand it. I can understand it. I mean, you were you were happy making money, everything was good, and now I'm you're doing I'm, a little I'm better. Happy. I'm making money, but it's way more stressful. <laughs> That's right. We got more stuff. Yeah, we got nicer stuff. But man, I don't you know. Hey, I, I know you enjoyed that Disney trip. Don't well, play with me. Uh, yeah, that was different. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's talk Jeff Collins. Okay. Temple coach now is coaching at Georgia Tech. Paul Johnson has retired. Collins is great. Like, he's uh, – it, it, it's time to move on from the triple option. Uh, Collins, tough nose. Uh, I'm a game. big fan of this hire. Yeah. Big fan. I, me and you have had this conversation in the past – Back in the day when Louisville's athletic director, way before all the problems, we're talking about 10 years ago, that guy pulled Bobby Petrino, he pulled Charlie Strong, uh, he pulled one other guy. Like He went like three coaches in a row, bam, 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 and all three of them were just complete home runs. And my first thought was is, screw hiring the head coach. You can get the AD way cheaper than the head coach. That guy knows how to interview and find people – and, and, and run an athletic department to to grow and build a big program and a good program. And if I was looking for an AD right now, I, someone who's not real thrilled with my AD at LSU, <laughs> I'd go take Temple's AD in a heartbeat. Yeah. Matt Rule was an incredible hire. Just an unbelievable coach. And then Collins, Collins yeah. same thing. Now this makes sense. Collins is from Georgia. Yep. Uh, he has been on staff twice at Georgia Tech. Like, this is – he knows what's going on down here. And this is the guy that's going to have, like, 
rappers on the sideline at Georgia Tech games. Like, yes, it's a an institution of of higher learning, but you got to use what Atlanta gives you, though. Yeah, man, you got to like. I understand it's going to be tough to get some kids into school there. That's right, but you got to start appealing oh, to Van, Vanderbilt does it, Stanford does it, you know, Northwestern does it, BC does it, Notre Dame does it. You can figure out a way to get these kids in, and they're not going to be, you know. You can't you can't be the the JUCO transfer that can barely read guys that are getting in trouble. Like you can't do a lot of that. But, no, but there, there's something to be said but for having intelligent football players. But there's, and that's pl- a good thing. there's plenty of guys out there that have skill and that are smart enough to play. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Um, da, 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 let's move on. And the ACC is winnable. They oh, got, it's 100% they got, winnable. They got Clemson as a monster. That is it. That's the list. Oh, yeah. Everybody else is barely 500. Well, now, okay, so so sticking on that, let's talk about Louisville. Oh, gosh. Scott Satterfield. I love this hire. This dude's unbelievable, man. At 51-24 and 24 overall at App State, like, and that's moving from FCS to FBS, the guy's great. Like he's he's always been good. He always wins his. So when you're looking at success rate, which is coaching, right? It is teaching kids how to be efficient. Okay. His numbers are through the freaking roof. His I like this. His competition wasn't great either. And the no, coaches that came before. But I mean, him, you talk about Neil Brown a lot. And, and the like, coaches that came before him. Well, I'm not. This if is you can not coach, a knock. You can coach. You're right. The coaches that came before him won at App State as well. App State is like an institution of, of something at that level that they consistently win. They've been doing it for a decade. Yeah. So it's not that like this guy ushered in the, the 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 history of winning. Okay. He might be great. I think Louisville is a cancer. This is one job where I would tell Paul. You know, Bill Clark, um, uh, Neil Brown, all those guys. Hey, don't take Stay that. Stay away. Like, those are the guys that I'm wanting so bad to get a big job. I love them, and, and I want to follow them at a bigger program. Stay away from that place. Well, this job is going to take a long. It it is a major rebuild. You're not going to get a long time. Major we, we overhaul. Just, we just don't live in that world. Yeah, I mean, you might be right. Un- unless you're taking over a program like Baylor. You're not getting five, six years to rebuild. Well, but here's the thing: the entire athletic department has been rebuilt. I, 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 under, I understand like that. Like a new AD, uh, new basketball coach, new you know everything. So, yeah, I mean it's going to take him a little bit of time. I think Satterfield will have it rolling pretty soon. I would hope, um, but it, it could take a couple of years. And I hope I, that they're I think patient recruiting with him. there is going to be insanely difficult. You're probably right. Uh, speaking of hard recruiting places. Mel Tucker, Georgia defensive coordinator, takes the Colorado job. He moved back into college in 2015, was hired on the Alabama staff, went with Kirby to Georgia as the defensive coordinator. Right. Uh, before that, he spent nine seasons in the NFL. I, I mean, I think this is this is good. It's hey, okay. A pretty, pretty it's good not hire. a bad hire. It's not a bad hire. I'm not going to get real excited about it. I don't think he's going to make waves there. I, I would need to see something. My my argument with this is a. I'm never a big fan. We've had this conversation before. I'm never a big fan of hiring the coordinator of the same side of the ball that the head coach is a genius. Yeah. Like okay, no, you it worked out for Georgia. You might have lost something. Yeah, that's right. It, but it hasn't worked out all the time. It hasn't worked out. Much of the time now, offensively, that that might be changing because you want those coordinators that worked under geniuses because you're hoping they learn something. Defense is a little bit different, but my problem is this: you got a defensive-minded head coach. You're the defensive coordinator. You've got more talent than any other team you play, except for the one game you played against Bama. You didn't stop anybody. The worst offense in the SEC put up thirty on you. And they could have put up 50 on you. Yeah. How great of a defensive coach are you? I mean, that's a, no, you're right. You're there right. Was, there was one game they played where the other team had more talent they, on the field. They had. They gave up points to everybody. Well, not, okay, not okay. everybody. Thanks. but You're going to bring up like a Tennessee game or, or some team where they just no, played No, I mean, they, they gave up. Team. They didn't give up anything to Kentucky. They, it, it, but there's a, a team lot of that crap averages te- 15 points a game. There's a lot of crap teams. 
Uh, so they didn't give up points to everybody. They gave up 17 to Florida. They Florida gave up points to bad good. teams. Some of them. Florida's not a good offensive team. Florida's not. Yeah, I mean, Don't the numbers say that. would say otherwise. No, like they, they're, no, I, I, we're just going to disagree. Eh. Anytime they play someone half decent, they get shut down. They don't score anything. Against LSU, they took two defensive touchdowns to score 20. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Either way, I, I think Mel Tucker's fine. I think he should be pretty good at this job. I think I'm he be knows. Suspect. And, and that's totally reasonable. He might be a great recruiter, and that's why he was brought in. But it, like, I don't, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know who was doing. So all the it's what we him. talked about before. Like, if he is the guy, it doesn't matter where his ties are. Well, you're right. And his ties, while they are in the southeast, he was the best recruiter on Georgia staff. Yep. See, so, I, yeah, I, I think if you're a good recruiter, you're a good recruiter, and you can go anywhere and recruit. Yeah. But, okay, that's not necessarily true. You can't go from USC to you know Texas Tech, Minnesota, and recruit like. No, because what you're selling at USC is totally different than what you're selling at Minnesota. Yeah, and it, what he sold at Alabama, and then he sold That's at right. Georgia, Georgia, and now you got to sell little Colorado. A little different. So you got to start selling to California kids and Texas kids. Hey, why don't you come out and and selling to Boulder in like the Denver area? Yeah. is a lot easier now than it used to be. It like, is. Hey, look, NCAA is going to tell you you can't smoke weed, but like we got weed. That's like right. you know, <laughs> come That's on, right. hang out. We'll, uh, we'll get you high. That's <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, we'll jump on this one. Will Healy. You know who Will Healy is? No. New Charlotte head coach. I don't know. Okay. He coached at Austin P. He's 33 years old. Now, he's got a 13-21 and 21 record in three years at Austin P. But this is a fantastic hire. And how, I, do you, how do you know that? He's 33. So he's younger than us. Austin P. That he's a child. Austin P. Went one and forty-five. I shouldn't have said that. That was in, <laughs> completely inappropriate. I'm five minutes older than that guy. But, <laughs> but, the, but the fact that that no. Austin P. Was one and forty-five in their forty-six games prior to him getting there, and it took him so he about got him a year to 30%. and a half. It took him a year and a half. He broke like this super long. He went zero and eleven his first season. And then won thirteen games the last two years. Okay, no, uh, that's decent. Then I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, I he, shouldn't, I he shouldn't went just knock a guy. He I went eight t- or eight and four in his second year. He only lost one game to an FCS opponent. Like the other three were to yeah. Georgia and yeah, whatever. Sense. Yeah, the pay for wins. He's he's great. He won the Eddie Robinson Award. He won the okay. uh, the Ohio Valley Conference yeah. Coach of the Year Award. Listen, like, listening to his his record at, at first, you know it sounds yeah. When you bad, just but, look at the record, but then I, it's one thing. But I completely agree. When you take over a, a a program that's done nothing, you've got a year or two of complete losing. Like that's gonna happen. Yeah. And so okay. I mean, yeah, right, this I'm is Will Healy. That's yeah. a name for you to watch out yeah, for. But he went to Charlotte. I'm ne- yeah. I'm still never gonna hear from the guy. It now like if he goes if he starts, undefeated in Charlotte, I I probably won't know about it. Well, and that's the thing. He will end up with a bigger job. That's it. And I will guarantee that. Well, that's fine. He's young. He can do it. Uh, Walt Bell, Florida State offensive coordinator, 34 years old. I don't understand this one. Mark Whipple got fired at UMass. UMass was, like, decent. They What, what did they go, five and I, seven I, or I six and six? Ask. or I have what? no idea what UMass did. Um, I mean, Whipple has not been bad, but, like, there's – there's nothing. That is a that program has no idea what they want to be, what they want to do. They they still play in Foxborough, like they they've got no fan base. Who could have watched Florida State and thought I want one of their coaches? Uh, it was especially on the offensive well, side. Florida State was like, we don't know if we want these guys, and we just hired them. They've well, been here they, five they minutes. They probably would have fired this guy had he not gotten this job. He's only thirty four years old. What if, what if there's a big Florida State alum that's like also. An alum of like here's of the thing. This was UMass. His, this was his first year. Well, he got his OC. master's degree at UMass. He's on a board, but he went to went to Florida State, and he's just like he's a big booster of both schools yeah. kind of thing. And he's just like, look, I'm going to help us out. I'm going to get you a job. We're going to save that buyout. Yeah, we're good. I mean, I, I could totally see it happening. It wouldn't surprise me. That's somebody who's got somebody a favor. He, he was he was at Arkansas State for four years, and then this last year was his first year as OC. He didn't get the play calling duties until late in the year, and one of those was a win over Boston College. So, not that they put up a ton of points. I mean, they only won twenty two twenty one, but like, you know, I mean, we'll we'll see. Like the jury's still out on this one. I don't I don't 
understand. I don't get it. But I'm, I'm I just don't know how anybody from Florida State got a job. Well, I'm also guessing that nobody from UMass like it. it or, nobody or wanted got the UMass job or got a promotion. Like nobody would have looked at Florida State and was like, "Well, this guy's like Lane Kiffin. He keeps failing into higher jobs." It's mm. like, like at, at Arkansas State, he was he was different. all right. He was different. okay. Okay, but like nothing he did at Arkansas State said that he should be the OC for Florida State. And then he gets Florida State, and he does terrible with Florida State. And then he gets a head coaching job at the FBS level. I, I don't right. understand it. I don't get it. Um, let's talk Mike Loxley for a minute. All right. That's a decent hire. Decent hire, I think. Like he Now, he failed miserably in his first head coaching job at, what was it, New Mexico? Mm-hmm. Went 2-26. and 26. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Like, you can't get worse than 2-26. and 26. But... He went through the Nick Saban rehab program. He was an analyst for a year or two, and then he moved up to the actual staff, and then he was the OC last year and set all kind of records, but it's kind of easy to do when you got Tua and those wide receivers and that stable running backs. That, and That's my problem, man. When you go – like if, if, if I was hiring and I wanted the OC from Oklahoma or I wanted the OC from Alabama, like – I. What am I getting? What what am I getting? Because it's like the Jake talent, Spavital, right? The like, talent you have and the talent at Maryland ain't the same, man. They're just not close. No, I think the biggest thing for Maryland was after everything that went down with DJ Durkin, right? They needed a coach that treated people like human beings. Well, and they wanted their guy. They wanted a guy. He's from that area. Yeah, he's from there. They wanted somebody who I think also is not going to take that as a stepping stone job. Yeah. If you come here and you win 10 games at Maryland one year – you're not immediately going to bolt for an Ohio State or an Alabama. Like, you're not going to bolt for the big boy job that comes open. Right. I think Loxley wants Maryland, and Maryland needed and I, somebody And I absolutely that, think Maryland and, needs somebody who cares about Maryland right now. Look, Coach Lox is one of the nicest guys no, yeah, in yeah. the entire world. Like, he's and, – and he will treat these kids with respect. Like, you won't have the same cultural problems there that you had before. No. No, so, he's definitely not Durkins. My – my like I said, my only issue is is coaching wise, man. I, yeah, we really have no idea what you're getting because he was handed the, you know, the the greatest car ever built, and said, "Here, drive this." All right, Maryland, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hand you our car. We we hand you the keys to it. We want you to drive that too. And Maryland's got talent. Like they they, they got no, they're not they're not yeah. they're not bums. No, they're definitely not bums. They, I don't know that they are. Um... I mean, they're they're not in the same level with Ohio State, I, and Michigan. I really and thought Canada that. was going to get that job. I thought he was. I mean, too. If, if if he if the two point conversion happens against Ohio State and they win that game, Canada's Canada's named the coach. Probably that, so. That day, I guess this is my problem. Everybody from Maryland actually like openly admits he beats Ohio State. He gets that job. So one play goes right. The right play call. Everything was fine. The guy was open. The quarterback misses him by two feet. That's how you're gonna you're you're gonna walk away from a guy because a quarterback missed a guy on one play for two feet. Well, I think the deal was they wanted to completely wipe the slate clean. So I don't know but that they he would have been the, no, the no, coach. No, no, no. They, but no, but abso- people make, absolutely you beat Ohio State there. You're 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 people yeah. make irrational emotional decisions because I don't think that beating Ohio State means he should have gotten the job. Yeah, maybe not. But you're right. He probably would have because people completely. It's just irrational. It's like right. oh, we, he beat Ohio State. Because well, LSU, like he got LSU stomped this, by Iowa. Like yeah. he got you know L- LSU did the exact same thing with less right. Yeah, like like. Less we thought they beat Auburn. Yep. And then a half second goes by, and you realize, oh, no, the clock ran out. We didn't get that playoff. We didn't beat Auburn. Now you're fired. Well, so one minute you're – Rather minute than you're, going through yeah. a coaching hire – You just promote oh, you up just, the guy. You, you just beat Mississippi State correct. in Starkville, and man, that's Matt a, Luke's our guy. That's right. That's a that's a great analogy. Yeah. Because that he is not qualified to be an SEC head coach. But Loxley, like, at this, this – fits their situation right now i think it's I think. fine yeah i, I mean maryland's fine. not a football powerhouse they want to be they want to play with the big boys in the big 10 yeah they want to try yeah so and, and but they're, not, will be they're fine. not there right now so uh speaking of not powers east carolina 
this uh, uh, so this story of of Mike Houston, James Madison head coach. All the reports are out that he's taking the Charlotte job, and then James Madison is still going through the playoffs, and they eventually get beat, and and East Carolina hires him. Now, I don't understand it. Like he. He's gone 37-6 and six in three seasons at James Madison. He got a national title in 2016, runner-up in 2017. He won four conference titles in five seasons um, between stops at, uh, I don't even know what this school is, and the Citadel. Like, it, this should be good because they've actually got, like, a leader at East Carolina now, which they haven't had in a long time. That's right. Uh, and it's going to take him a little time to build that up, and, and I would imagine they're going to give him plenty of time there. So I, I'm, I think that's a good hire. And it's about as good as East Carolina was going to do. I was about to say, I don't, yeah. I don't know I think that how was much fine. better he's going to do. Uh, let's talk about Les Miles. <sighs> we, hadn't, we hadn't talked much about that. Um, this one's disappointing. So we, we did talk last week on, on our coaches thing about it, but Les hired at Kansas. Okay. You know, it's it's good that Les has got a job, but, like, if you're Kansas, what are you doing? Like, you're hiring a, a 63-year-old and you oh need. no! Come on now. I think that's. I, I think Les is fine. Les made it clear he was going to go out if he got a job and hire a young, hot offensive coordinator. And then he didn't. And then he didn't. And I, that's so, that's all so, I wanted was him to. I mean, I knew he wasn't going to get um, Kingsbury. Like like Kingsbury's not going to Kansas. I got no. I got that. But, but you could hire like an up and coming, like a really young guy, somebody man that that inspires a little more hope than Chip Lindsey, who was going to be fired at Auburn regardless. You wouldn't hire a guy who just had one of the worst offensive like seasons with some talent. I mean, Auburn can play. You yeah. got a quarterback there. Stidham's not bad. Like Stidham's gonna go into the combine. I mean, he might get drafted. No, he'll get drafted. Like he, yeah. Like I mean, you got a guy that that's a that's an NFL quarterback. And you got NFL talent all over that roster, and you just laid an egg, man. Oh, just all season long laid an egg. I can't. That this is the least inspiring. I, I don't understand why Chip Lin- like I, I've I've had people tell me it was because of recruiting purposes, but I mean you're recruiting to Kansas. Like, what are you? I mean, you still got to be able to recruit, but the, yeah. the, you could find the X's and those guys, and you could hire position guys to recruit. I just I, I don't know. It's very uninspiring. Uh, by the way, did you see Auburn offered their OC position to Bobby Bentley, Jake Bentley's dad, hmm. who was the I think the wide receivers coach, maybe the running backs coach in South know. Carolina, and he turned him down. I found that really interesting. Uh, so Auburn still has no OC right now. They're they're still trying to find somebody. Uh, we talked last week about Tyson Helton at Western Kentucky. Explained why that uh, why that was going that way. They wanted to get back to somebody that actually knew uh, the the situation. Mac Brown at North Carolina. Uh, they hired Army's defensive coordinator after the Army Navy game, um, and then brought in Greg Robinson, getting the band back together from the old Texas days. Another uninspiring offensive coordinator hire. Yeah, and, and I'm not I'm not super I'm a little concerned about the defensive coordinator hire. Like the Army defense was incredible. This guy yeah. What he's done there is great. You only have to play like twenty possessions a game. Twenty possessions, twenty snaps. Yeah. At Army. Then it's not gonna be the same at UNC. No. Unless you're gonna run a slow plotting hold the ball for 40 minutes offense, which I don't think you're going to do, then you got to have a defensive guy that can coach defense for 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's um, my fear. That's my biggest fear of that hire. Bowling Green hires Scott Leffler. Uh, he was the Auburn offensive coordinator for a while. He has been at Virginia Tech and, and recently at Boston College. Uh, he's done pretty good. He's familiar with the recruiting grounds in the MAC. We'll see. Like Bowling Green has just been a dumpster fire for for a while. For well, since Dino left, yep. right? Since Sorry. Dino Babers left, they've been awful. Uh, so that's you know we'll see. Like I, it, it takes a special kind of person to to win at a school like that. Um, Jake Spavitall takes Texas State. That's another one of those that you were talking about before. 
Uh, he's a member of the air raid tree, but like you're hiring the offensive coordinator of the guy that runs the offense at West Virginia. Yeah, like he was. So Spavital was at A and M, got fired, and then, you know, I mean, we, like we'll we'll see how this works. Like I I think he should do better than ever Withers did. Texas State has been awful, just terrible. I don't um, know. so we'll see. Uh, Jim McElwain hired at Central Michigan. I don't know what to make of that. Like I, I it kind of makes sense. Like I mean, it's the best thing that could happen to Michigan. Yeah, I mean, well, he was just a wide receivers coach at Michigan. I, 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 yeah, you get that guy out of your locker room. <laughs> get him out of there, uh, McElwain. Like that should be a that's a good hire for Central Michigan, right? Okay. Like the guy won at, at Colorado State. He seemed to do better when there was no spotlight Pressure. on him. That's right. So you're right. Yeah. You're right. He pr- he will probably do fine there. Yeah, I think it, there won't be any pressure on him to win at Central Michigan because uh, they they don't win. That's like, right. They're not expected to do anything. So the level uh, of expectation is down. So yeah, you don't care. All right. So uh, last of the ones that have been filled, Matt Wells, Utah State coach, is now the Texas Tech coach. I like this hire. It's going to get you away from the air raid thing that you were talking about. Now, he is still an offensive coach, oh, yeah. so he's going to be able to put up points. They're not going to hurt offensively. It's just going to be a different kind of system. Yeah, Utah State led the country in points per game this yeah. year, so they will be able to put up points. Uh, now, once they ran up against teams like Boise State and whatnot, obviously they got slowed down, but but you're going to do that. Like it, He puts up points as, as best he can. We're not going to go undefeated at Texas Tech. You just got to beat 80% of those teams. Yeah, and, and, and he ought to be able to do that. I was about to say, you're not going to run into many defenses there. No, you got that right. You got that right. And he'll be able to use the talent that they've already got. Oh, yeah, you don't have to overhaul that offense. No, it's completely no, you don't fine. Have to change everything. Um, Akron fired Terry Bowden. Uh, Utah State is now looking for a coach for Matt Wells. Scott Satterfield is gone, so App State is looking for a coach. And Temple is looking for a coach. Last but not least, Bill Snyder retired from Kansas State. I have no idea who they are going to go after. Like, I think Jim Levitt would take the job. Defensive coordinator at Oregon now. He was at Colorado. Had, like, a a top 10 defense at Colorado. Um, Used to be the South Florida coach. He played at Kansas State. Like, he wants the job. But Bill Snyder did not want to give him the job when he stepped down, so I wonder how much of that is, is going on in the background. Like, there's a lot of political crap going on with this job. I don't get that. Once you've retired, thank you. We appreciate all that you've done. You no longer Well, the last here. time that Snyder handed the job off to somebody, he gave it to Ron Prince. Yeah. And you saw how well that worked out. It worked out so well that after three years, Snyder came back. And was like, okay, I got to fix this again. No, I don't. I don't. I don't like the idea of the person leaving, trying to dictate what the school's going to do after he's gone. The so Mike Norvell's name has popped up with it. I heard that. Would that be a good hire for them? I mean, I, yeah, I think that, be, hey, yeah, that'd be great for them. This is where we just going to see the world differently. I think that the American Conference is so close to being up there with, not just close, if you take Clemson away from the ACC, the American Conference is not just better than the ACC, it's head and shoulders better than the ACC. I mean, it's it's quite a bit better than the ACC. Huh. And, and I don't know that I would be jumping ship from the American to go to the Big 12. I think it's better than the Big 12 if you take Oklahoma away. All of these conferences well, have – And Texas – even still, it's like, See, eh. you, you drink that Kool-Aid all day long. I'll take UCF over Texas. Right now, today, play them. Well, I mean, UCF's right favorite second, to be. Yeah, right, right this second, but that, What are we talking about? Ten years from now? Five years from now? Well, I don't know how long UCF is, is going to stay relevant. We're done like with I, that. We're done with that. Anyway, <laughs> I, I would not be. But that's the problem, is you're assuming that these schools are just going to yo-yo, and if these coaches stay and these programs get built – and I know there's a lot of ifs involved, but if Temple doesn't lose two ridiculous games at the beginning of the season to teams that just should not lose to, then then they're easily a top 25 team, probably a top 15 team. Okay, if Memphis doesn't lose to Tulane and Navy, they're top 15 team. Yeah. Like like you you have a conference that's stronger than every conference other than the SEC. Why why do you 
you don't have to go play the big boys. You become a big boy. But you can't keep jumping ship to do that. I wouldn't take the Kansas State job over the Memphis job. Flat out, you can call me a homer all you want. No, no, no. I, don't I think wouldn't that's, take it. I don't it. think that's the a homer job, thing at all. The Memphis job is a better job than the Kansas State job. I think you can get better players at Memphis. Correct. I think that the and I pay think the, will be very I, comparable. And, and I think the American Conference is about five minutes less than the, than, than the Big 12 right now. They're not as famous. Their names aren't as big as long. But guess what? All the cities are massive. And, yeah. and and you just keep growing those you just keep growing those programs at Houston keep growing them at Memphis keep growing them in Orlando keep growing them in Philadelphia Cincinnati Cincinnati like big market cities keep growing them in Tampa you're going to be just fine yeah I agree you're going to be just fine I'm really curious how that like what the TV deal is going to be for them it's going to be fine because those schools don't need the budget that the SEC has or the Big Ten has. I mean, they. If you want to keep playing with the big boys, yeah, like you no, need that. No, because no, that, you, any TV money is better than what they're getting, and they're competing with those schools already. Those schools are all running and hiding right now. I wouldn't call it hiding. They're absolutely running and hiding. They're absolutely running and hiding. Who? Every. What, what are you even talking about right now? We're not getting into this. <laughs> you know my thoughts so, and my feelings on that. I think Kansas State, like if they were able to pry Norvell away, one, it's going to take a massive load of money. It takes some money because Memphis has got money. Memphis is already paying him two and a half million a year, yeah. like, and he's set up there. They love him here. So now at Kansas State, like, how much time do you have to? Because it Kansas State has been built the last few years with junior college players. Like that's because they can't recruit. Exactly, you can't get so, top tier talent. I think like if if they will put aside all the Bill Snyder crap and just go hire Jim Levitt, he already proved it at South Florida. Like it, South Florida was a Big East team. Remember there if was a power hire, six. It, now if you're talking from the standpoint of Kansas State, if you can hire Norvell, you hire Norvell. Oh, absolutely. You hire Norvell because he is he is much better coach. But I don't think he's going to come. I think you can. I wouldn't. Leave. I think you can hire Jim Levitt. I think you could get him. I think Memphis is a better job right now. You might be right. You might be right. You may not be able to win a national championship there, but I don't think you're going to be able to win a national championship at Kansas State right now. I think you can win one easier at Memphis than you're talking about. I think you can win one easier at Memphis than you can in Kansas State. You might be right. I mean, you you got to win like two, three big games a year. I think think the climate is changing. I think we are getting to a point where at some point in time you have to recognize the American. you You might be right. I'm not going to say you're wrong on that. You can't, you can't keep ignoring them. I think you might be right on that. All right, that's going to wrap up our FBS hiring and firing uh, uh, podcast, video, segment, whatever you want to call it. As always, it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. More information on it over at tunicatravel.com. You can go find more stuff on us over at winningcureseverything.com. And if you're watching on YouTube or on the podcast, Hit that subscribe button for us. We appreciate you.